Hey guys, we are back in the lab with a 10 pound block of dry ice. To answer the question, what does dry ice do in a vacuum chamber? The request for this experiment came in the comments from Jason Gamer. Thanks for your request, Jason. I'm sending $25 your way. Now dry ice is solid carbon dioxide with a temperature of about minus 109 degrees Fahrenheit, but that's at sea level. If we put it in a vacuum chamber and suck the air out, the pressure changes and the properties of the dry ice change as well. Now people ask all the time, where do you even get dry ice? I just went down to the grocery store and picked this up for about $13. They usually have a container near the front of the store where they keep it and you can get some as long as you're over 18. Okay, cool. Let's jump right in. Gloves make it hard to work with. Being safe is so restrictive. Ooh, good stuff. Hey, just a thought, will your tongue stick to dry ice if you lick it? Hmm, apparently not, but it is a little fizzy. My tongue's a little cold. <laughs> okay, so one problem, guys. This isn't gonna fit in there. We're gonna have to smash it up a little bit. So let's grab a hammer and go to work. Oh, you think I could karate chop this in half? That was a lot harder than I thought, and it actually did hurt quite a bit, but we did it! We did it! That is how you break dry ice. There we go, all right, cool. So we got a few chunks of dry ice in there. Listen to that. Our dry ice is having a private moment. Look at the way the vapor is falling in, filling up the container. Right now what it's doing is pushing the oxygen out and filling the container with carbon dioxide. So we got a few good chunks of dry ice in our vacuum chamber. Let's go ahead and put on the lid, close the valve, get this thing fired up. Let's see what happens. All right, so it actually is pulling vacuum pressure. It's probably not the smartest idea to be using a glass container because the dry ice can actually cool down the glass at the bottom while the glass at the top stays warm. So that creates a difference in temperature that could expose the glass to shattering and imploding. So this is a little bit dangerous. From here, I can see the gauge is probably around 23 inches of mercury, which is about as low as that vacuum pump can pull. I'm gonna close this valve and turn off the vacuum pump. Watch the gauge as I do. Now it's about 22 inches of mercury, but as the dry ice continues to vaporize that carbon dioxide, you can see the container actually starts repressurizing and the gauge is dropping in pressure. So just to go a little bit further, let's release the pressure. Let's add a little bit of warm water to get this thing vaping a little bit and then turn the vacuum chamber back on. Let's open the valve in three, two, one. Sweet dry ice vapor. It actually smells like vinegar and I think that's because of the proto putty. <laughs> I just poured some hot water. This is about the hottest I could get it out of my tap. And pouring this in will actually help insulate the bottom of the glass as well and reduce the chances of it imploding on us. Oh, that's cool. Oh man, who doesn't love dry ice? Surprisingly, I can actually breathe that quite well. I mean, I thought it would be stinging my lungs. Like if you put dry ice into a balloon and then breathe it, it hurts the lungs quite a bit, but I can breathe this just fine. Let's go ahead and add the rest of it. So we now have hot water, dry ice in our vacuum chamber. So let's go ahead and put the lid on and see what happens when we turn it on this time. This valve open, this valve closed. You can see if I actually try and hold this container closed, the lid will actually start popping up. There's nothing I can do about it. And if I open the exhaust valve, we could actually get dry as vapor shooting out of it. That looks cool. It looks right out of the movies, like a busted pipeline or something. Sweet. Okay, let's close that off and turn on the vacuum. Three, two, one. Oh, and we actually are pulling vacuum pressure. That's surprising to me. Because with how much vapor's coming off, I wonder if that would kind of neutralize, if it would equalize. But we're at about 13 inches of mercury right now and steadily increasing. So there used to be a really dense, thick white fog and that has been reduced to the point now where I can actually see the dry ice blocks inside. There still is a white vapor, but that is slowly being pulled out. And if you look closely, you can even see a little bit of that vapor flowing down the tube here to the vacuum pump. Now I'm not exactly sure how good it is to be running carbon dioxide and water vapor into a vacuum pump, but hey, it's for you guys, it's for science. All right, so update guys, we're down to about 20 inches of mercury right now, so let's just flip the valve open, let all the air back in and see what happens. Oh, and now you can hear it bubbling again, that's interesting. 
So we tried a massive amount of dry ice in a container. What would happen if we just tried a very small amount of dry ice? Let's break off a small chunk, throw it into our pressure cooker and just see what happens there. Throw that in, set the vacuum on. Gauge is rising, rising fast, man, that looks good. Oh yeah, that's a lot faster than we had all that dry ice in there. We're almost up as far as this thing can go right now. 22 inches of mercury. Oh wow, look, the dry ice is shaking a little bit. It's like vibrating. Looks really nervous right now. If I grab this lid and shake it, there's no way that's coming off. But interestingly enough, like the dry ice isn't doing much in there. It's still sublimating like it normally would, but I don't know if it's sublimating any faster, but I really have no way to gauge that, so. Yeah, dry ice in a vacuum is very anticlimactic. Nothing's really happening. So there you have it, guys. A very fun and a very cool experiment with dry ice in a vacuum chamber. And thanks again to Jason Gamer for requesting this experiment. If any of you have experiments you want to see me try, post your suggestions down below. Thanks for joining me for this video. I'll be looking for you in the next one. Talk to you then. Excuse you.